Hi everyone. Good day to you, wherever you are. And I welcome you to the finest music drama channel. Sharing the love of finest literature. Just lie down on an easy chair. Throw your cares off your mind. Think of nothing but the temperature of your drink. I hope you will enjoy today's dramatization. Your comments are much appreciated. Please support the love of finest literature by subscribing and sharing the channel with friends to get updated on future releases. I will make a short introduction to the last confession. Then we will enjoy the dramatization afterward. The Last Confession, by Roger Crane, adapted by Martin Jenkins. This is, indeed a conspiracy thriller that goes behind the scenes, at the Vatican, uncovering the bitter rivalries, political skullduggery, and crises of faith, surrounding the untimely death of Pope John Paul I, in 1978. Albino Luciano is elected to succeed Pope Paul IV, and takes the name Pope John Paul I. He quickly establishes himself as a liberal. But 33 days later he is dead. No autopsy is performed, no investigation is carried out and the Vatican's press release about the cause of death is found to be inaccurate. The evening before his death, the Pope has told a number of influential, yet hostile, cardinals, that he intends to replace them. Bellini, who was expected to have been elected Pope, misses out once again as Pope John Paul II is chosen. The thriller goes behind the scenes at the Vatican, uncovering bitter rivalries, political maneuverings, and crises of faith, as people begin to question whether Pope John Paul I was murdered, and whether there was a cover-up, sanctioned by powerful elements within the Church, and crises of faith surrounding the untimely death of Pope John Paul I in 1978. Let listen to the dramatization. The Last Confession by Roger Crane You have a visitor, Your Eminence. Yes. Send him in. Yes, Your Eminence. You're late. At least I'm here. How's Rome? Eternal. Oh, that is what we were taught. Do you doubt it? I have many doubts. I was told you were ill. I'm dying. Do you wish to confess? What I wish for is peace. Then confess and find peace. I have. Here. Mm. They told me you had written a confession and were considering publishing it. Yes. Public confession is no longer in vogue in the church. I have come to hear your private confession. The church needs a public confession. The church needs only God. Oh, and where do God's plans end and man's begin? Where is the line between divine providence and human intervention? Have you forgotten, Luciani? Yes. I... Giovanni Benelli, Patriarch of Florence and Cardinal of the Roman Catholic Church, do hereby state that this is my last will and testament, my final confession. Luciani was without doubt. I didn't come here to talk about Luciani. Then leave. Very well. And I will publish my confession. It begins with Luciani. It begins five years ago. I will hear your confession. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I have killed the emissary of God. Mm, dear. Can I help? I was looking for Archbishop Benelli. Do you have an appointment? No. The Archbishop may be busy. I, I can wait. Who shall I say? Luciani. Cardinal Luciani. 
Of course, your eminence, uh, this way. Albino, it's good to see you. I enjoyed your book. You did? Mm. Oh, thank you. It was just some letters. Oh, yes. But to Mark Twain, Jules Verne, very illustrious. <laughs> what brings you to Rome? I came to see His Holiness, but he's too busy. Oh, it must be a terrible thing to be Pope. Oh, for some men. That's bad enough, being a cardinal. A patriarch of Venice, a beautiful city. Mm -hmm. now, my parishioners wanted me to have my own boat and gondolier. Can you imagine? A private boat just waiting for me? Oh, I've seen your car. You could do with a boat. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do when you need one? I call the fire brigade. They lend me one of theirs. And if there's a fire? Oh, sometimes even God has to wait. I need your help. Bishop Marcinkus is selling the Catholic Bank of Venice. Yes, I know. For far less than it is worth. Have you discussed this with our Secretary of State? I did. He said he could do nothing. Oh, then Cardinal Vio is wiser than I thought. But you run the church for His Holiness, not Vio. Well, not many cardinals in the Curia would enjoy hearing that. You are the Pope's friend, the second most powerful man in Rome. Marcinkus is his banker. And what about the poor of Venice? The church is their banker. The poor are always with us. But when the Pope sent me to Venice, the churches were empty. But the streets were filled with prostitutes, with the mentally ill, with the handicapped. The city had shut its doors. I opened mine. And many priests objected to giving communion to the prostitutes and the handicapped. These creatures do not understand, they said. So one day after mass, I asked a young girl who was afflicted with a terrible spinal disease if she knew what she had received. She said, yes, Jesus. I will not abandon them. Marcinkus has dangerous friends. Are you afraid of him? No. Then help us, Giovanni. You want me to fight him over some little bank in Venice? Yes. Marcinkus will hold this against you. He's used the power of the Vatican Bank to break people, even cardinals. One cardinal less, especially a small one, doesn't matter. Will you help? Well, perhaps it is time I had a talk with Vio and Marcinkus. I will try. I hope this is necessary. Marcinkus is selling the Catholic Bank of Venice. It has nothing to do with us. Well, he's selling it for far less than it's worth. Why? Uh, he's an American from Chicago. Uh, Cicero, to be precise. The home of the gangster Al Capone. If you want to discuss Marcinkus, draft an agenda and contact my secretary. We will discuss it then. We need to do something now. Masinkas has the confidence of His Holiness. Oh, I thought you did too. Twice on trips, Masinkas has saved the Pope's life. You can wrestle with the Pope's gorilla if you want to. I have better things to do. Bishop Marcinkas? Thank you, Monsignor McGee. Archbishop Benelli? I didn't realize we were going to have a formal meeting. You should have sent me an agenda. There isn't a meeting. Albino Luciani visited me today. He had some questions about the Catholic Bank of Venice. You should have come to see me. I always enjoy the visits of cardinals. But I hear the price Calvi is paying is somewhat low. He's a very astute businessman. The bank relies on him frequently. Oh, Calvi is in the business of high-risk finance. Well, that's what he calls it. And that is not the business of the Vatican Bank. Calvi has the complete confidence of myself. And, of course, his holiness. So did Sindona, his predecessor. Yeah, and where is Sindona now? I hear he is in a cell. A jail cell. No doubt saying his prayers. <laughs> it would take more than prayers. Perhaps you would like to point out to His Holiness his error in trusting his friend Sindona? Oh, since you were placed in charge of the Vatican Bank, its principal advisor has been jailed and the bank accused of participating in a multi-million dollar bond fraud. I think accused is a little strong. Oh, what word would you use? It's more difficult to prove innocence than imply guilt. And when the FBI paid you a visit last month? It was a pity I couldn't help them. Perhaps I can. This is bank business. No, this is church business. I think it's time someone looked into the bank's finances. The Vatican Bank is the Pope's bank. Owned by the Pope for the Pope's purposes. Right, the Pope's purposes, not Calvi's. You may be able to make the rest of the Vatican report to you, but not the Vatican Bank. I will have an accounting. I am accountable only to the Pope and to God. At least one of us is here. Oh, <laughs> Holiness. Cardinal Felici? 
We had a call from the bank that you were meeting with Bishop Marcinkus. We see you are making friends. I'm always trying. Perhaps we can be of help. We were discussing finance, Your Holiness. Well, Bishop Marcinkus is very knowledgeable about finance. Uh, he was explaining some of Calvi's subtler manoeuvres. Calvi is hardly subtle. Perhaps you might enlighten us, Bishop Marcinkus. We are selling Calvi the Catholic Bank of Venice, Your Holiness. Is that necessary? He needs it to expand Banco Ambrosiano's asset base. That will raise its stock price so Calvi can make more acquisitions. Do we own Banco Ambrosiano? No, Your Holiness. A small piece. A very small piece. We have very profitable investments with Ambrosiano. We help them, they help us. For an American, that sounds very Italian. I have lived in the Vatican for some time, Cardinal Felici. It seems to be necessary. Is Luciani upset? Yes. He is a good man. He understands that sometimes it is necessary to sacrifice. And when were you going to tell us? Tomorrow, Your Holiness. The sale hasn't closed. Have we signed a contract? Yes. Bishop Marcinkus has our complete confidence in financial matters. Of course, Your Holiness. Thank you, Your Holiness. You may leave us. Your Holiness? Your Holiness. We need you with us, Cardinal Felici. We have been discussing the status of the new code of church law, the ever-changing, never-finished church law. It is a canon of law, not the Sistine Chapel, Cardinal Felici. When will you be done? These things take time. Mm. Ten years. Your commission's latest draft is a labyrinth of rigid rules. A majority of the bishops approve. Oh, fewer than half were asked. Is that true? I will see to it a copy is circulated to every bishop. And the Second Vatican Council's direction? That the canon reflect the simple teaching of the Gospels? The Gospels were inspired by God. My commission has to rely on the talents of men. Perhaps someone else can provide inspiration. My dear Archbishop, I understand that your talents are fully employed elsewhere. Oh. Benelli, you are to communicate the comments and suggestions of the bishops to Cardinal Felici so that the commission can finish its work on our review. And the commission will finish. Of course. Benelli will help us back to our rooms. Your Holiness. There is only so much time, especially for us. I know. I would be very interested in your views on the new code, Benelli. Perhaps you would be kind enough to stop by my chambers. As you wish. He will never finish. In the end, he will have to draft it as the Vatican Council directed. And Marcinkus? Well, we need his help, just like we need yours. But his friend Calvi is corrupt. The Vatican, like any great power, needs money. It is a great faith. It is a great power. Never doubt it. You need friends, my son. Make Marcinkus a friend. He is good at helping people. Not Marcinkus. Be careful of Pa Giovanni. Your punishment may be finding it. Come in. Cardinal Felici, you wanted to discuss the new canon law. I'm glad you decided to accept my invitation. Well, you have a wonderful view. I can see most of the city. You can also look directly into the papal apartments. Mm, at night I see him hard at work at his desk, caring for Mother Church. Uh, his Holiness is very diligent. He eagerly awaits your revised canon law. Pope John and the Second Vatican Council said they wanted to open the windows of the church for a dialogue with the world. What if he and the council were wrong? What if they let something else in? Doubt, uncertainty, division. You mean reassessment, renewal? Men need to reassess. Men need renewal. The church is. Truth is. Reassessing doesn't change them. Even the church can need renewal. Are the Articles of Faith enunciated by Christ any different if placed in the context of history or analysed by modern sociology? No. They are unchanging, <laughs> eternal. Men change. How they view the world changes. You and I change. Men are not the measure of truth. God is. How do you measure God? Against 2,000 years of tradition. Oh. The Vatican Council has directed you to embody the spirit of the Gospels in the new canon. The Gospels are a beautiful ideal impossible to realize in the present world. 
How do you reconcile your exercise of power with the simple life of Christ? I pray, Your Eminence. I've not forgotten how to pray. And has God answered you? God has given me the questions. He will help me find the answers. <laughs> you would make a good Lutheran. Then so would the Pope. Ha <laughs> Hamlet Pope. Are you saying the Holy Father is in error? We need a Pope great enough to be ruthless in the defence of Christ's Church. You could be such a Pope. <sighs> We have a Pope. The Pope is old. His health is good. Is it? Soon, very soon, we will elect a new Pope. The man who lives in those apartments is the Vicar of Christ on Earth. He holds the allegiance of 800 million Catholics and the respect of hundreds of millions more. Governments fear his judgment. Kings have knelt down before him. I can make you Pope. Only God can make a pope. Cardinals make popes. Oh, and Satan took Jesus to the highest mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the earth. I serve the pope. Your service is to God. And I will listen to him when he calls. Until then, both of us serve the pope. You will finish the canon. I will revise the canon. It will be interesting to see if you are still here when I am done. How long have we been Pope? Uh, Fourteen years, Your Holiness. The newspapers write about us in the past tense. It is strange to read about ourselves as if we were already dead. We have accomplished so little. There is still time. We were elected to heal the divisions in the church. Now it is more divided than ever. Birth control, divorce, abortion, priests wanting to marry, women wanting to be priests, even the authority of the Pope is questioned. We have become the obstacle to church unity. You have made the church the servant of the people. The church we were born to was the servant of God. Well, you were the Pope. Take back your church. Throw out anyone in the courier who will not support you. And reach out to your people. Reach out to them. We are 79 years old. Someone else will have to try. Pope John told us that the courier defeats every Pope in the end. He was right. My son, you will have to leave us. You will have to leave Rome. Oh, I need to be here. You must go. I can't. Will you disobey us? Vio has been trying to exile me for years. Who else? Felice, Marcinkus, all of them. And if I say no? Everything here is over. All that is left is our death. The future is for the next Pope. We have appointed 20 new cardinals, mostly foreign. The Roman Courier will not be able to control the next conclave. And they hate us for it. Who will come after us, Vio? No. He's too weak. Baggio? A shallow opportunist. Felici? Anyone other than Felici. What about you? <laughs> Cardinals become Pope, not Archbishops. We can make you a Cardinal. Then me before Felici. Today we will announce that we have appointed you Cardinal and assigned you to Florence. Will you go? Yes. At least you have not failed us. But we fear we have failed God. You are a great Pope. I wonder. When I stand before God and account for my stewardship of his holy church, how will I be judged? With mercy. Go to Florence, Cardinal Benelli. Go with our blessing. But remember one thing. Men do not choose a pope. God does. Giovanni, pray for me. You, not Felici. Why? Because I saw in Felici my worst self. I wanted to be Pope. 
<laughs> I burned to be Pope, but how could I reconcile this use of power with the life of Christ? There is nothing wrong with the use of power in the name of God. I'm talking about pride, overwhelming arrogance, the belief that you can mold history to your own design. Somewhere beneath the marble dome of the Vatican, somewhere in the countless bureaucratic struggles. My faith had slipped away. You abandoned God? I think God abandoned me. On August the 6th, 1978, at 9.40pm, Pope Paul VI, the 260th direct successor of Peter as God's representative on earth, died. He reigned 15 years, one month, and 15 days. He was my friend. And the message went out across the world to the cardinal princes of the Roman Catholic Church. The Pope is dead. You are summoned to the conclave, summoned to elect the next Pope and to decide the fate of the Catholic Church. Well, not the Holy Spirit, but I, Cardinal Giovanni Benelli, would select the next Pope. A gentler, holy man. A man without doubts. Too humble to be changed by power. An innocent. Perhaps. But I would select the next Pope. And God help the Cardinals and the Vatican on my return. You should have stayed here in Rome after the funeral. You missed all the fun. I accomplished more Cardinal Sinons in Florence using the telephone. But it couldn't have been nearly as interesting. The London bookmakers have published odds on a number of candidates. Pignodoli is the favourite. Siri is second. Felici is third. He claims he supports Siri. And you are listed fourth at four to one. And Luciani? Who? Luciani, Patriarch of Venice. Not listed, of course. And then there is Creep. Uh, what is Creep? Committee for the Responsible Election of the Pope. Well, I assume it doesn't include any cardinals. Correct. Listen to their criteria. Help wanted. A hopeful, holy man who can smile. That's the heading. Interesting work, guaranteed income, residence comes with position, protection by proven security organisation, <laughs> apply College of Cardinals, Vatican City. Goes on, uh, Pope, not for all Catholics, but for all peoples. A man totally free from the slightest taint of financial wheeling and dealing. Well, perhaps you should apply. I still enjoy the wheeling and dealing. <laughs> they have described Luciani. He can't be serious. When I supported Paul at the last conclave, at least I knew he wanted to be Pope. The press asked Luciani yesterday. He told them, you can't make gnocchi out of this dough. Now, humility used to be a virtue in the church. He knows himself. He won't accept it. If the conclave votes for him, he will accept. Come in. Your eminence. Oh. Cardinal Simmons. Cardinal Gontin. Playing politics again. <laughs> the Holy Spirit will decide who is to be the next Pope. Sometimes the Holy Spirit needs help. <laughs> My brother cardinals in Africa agree. They asked me to come and see you, Your Eminence. What do you want from me? My brother cardinals and I want to know if you are willing to become more than a cardinal now. The reactionaries are organizing around Felici and Siri. Um, I am too young for consideration. That is what he told me. These are special times. They may demand a young pope. He has this thing about the church needing a holy pastor. What we need is a Christ to drive the moneylenders like Masinkos from the temple. Well, Christ was also a holy pastor. Will you reconsider? Uh, have you met Cardinal Luciani? Briefly. He has written a series of letters to historic figures such as Dickens, Mark Twain, Marie Antoinette. Each letter makes a simple moral point. They have been published in a book. I have heard something about it. Well, you and your friends should read Luciani's book. That's all you want me to tell them? Yes. And that I'm voting for Luciani. I will tell them. Won't you let us support you? No. 
A reluctance for power has never been one of your virtues. Perhaps I don't care to stand that close to God. The first ballot has been collected. A vote for Cardinal Felici. A vote for Cardinal Siri. A vote for Cardinal Luciani. A vote for Cardinal Benelli. A vote for Cardinal Pignadoli. Luciani has 20 votes, Siri has 25, and Pignadoli has dropped to 15. Baggio has nine. You have 20. Oh. They're still voting for you, Giovanni, despite what you said. If you can get Pignadoli to release his supporters and swing the South Americans from Lorscheider to you... I've already spoken to Pignadoli. And what did you tell him? That his dream of becoming Pope was over. That for the good of the Church, he had to support Luciani. How did he take it? Not well. But he knows I have a long memory. He's agreed to ask his supporters to vote for Luciani. You can't intimidate Lorscheider. Even a Brazilian Vescort couldn't do that. I wouldn't want to. How is Luciani? Shaken. When I left him, he was in his room, praying. Find Gunther and go and talk to him. What shall we tell him? Um, that it is the will of God. <sighs> Your Eminence. Oh, Cardinal Lorscheider, I'm glad to see you. Cardinal Luciani thinks it may be time for a non-Italian pope. The papacy has been Italian for 500 years. One might think it is time for a change. Well, he's telling the cardinals that you should be pope. I know. But what do you think of Luciani? He visited me in Rio last year. He is a charming and gentle man, more knowledgeable than some people believe. But he is no administrator. You have said the next pope should be a holy man, a good pastor, a man of hope. Well, you have described Luciani. He would need a strong secretary of state. Yes. Felici is saying that he may switch his support to Luciani. Uh, South America cannot accept a pope guided by an arch conservative like Felici. Well, Felici cannot control Luciani. He's a simple man, but it's the kind of simplicity that sees directly into the heart of issues, directly into men's souls. I would support you. I am not a candidate. Luciani does not want to be a candidate. Have you heard that the first test tube baby was recently born in England? Yes. And many church leaders condemned the birth? I know. Well, I would like to read you a letter from Cardinal Luciani. I send the most heartfelt congratulations to the English baby girl whose conception took place artificially. As far as her parents are concerned, I have no right to condemn them. If they acted with honest intentions and in good faith, they may even have great merit before God for what they wanted and asked the doctors to carry out. He concludes by saying that the individual conscience must always be followed. However, each individual must seek to develop a well-formed conscience. He is still no match for Felici and the rest of the curia. You're wrong. Yes, he's gentle, and yes, he's humble, but... When he's committed to a course of action, he is like a rock. You are his friend. Promise me you will protect him from Felici and the rest of the courier. <laughs> I promise. Will you give me the letter? I think some of the other cardinals would like to read it. The final tally is 99 votes for Cardinal Luciani, one vote for Cardinal Lorscheider, 11 abstentions. Do you accept your election as Supreme Pontiff? May God forgive you for what you have done. I accept. By what name do you wish to be called? John Paul the First. This morning I came to the Sistine to vote peacefully. I, I never imagined what was to take place. Realize this, I do not have the wisdom or heart of Pope John, nor do I have the preparation and culture of Pope Paul. However, I now stand in their place. I will seek to serve the church, and I hope that you will help me with your prayers. 
Prayers were the only help he ever received. Why Luciani? Even the robes didn't fit. <laughs> they made the paper garments in every size. Except his. Nobody had his measure. Where is his hood in the sister? I'm busy with these books. And who are you? Father Lorenzi, Your Eminence. I was the Holy Father's secretary when he was a cardinal in Venice. He brought you to Rome? Yes, Your Eminence. I repeat, where is His Holiness? He said he wanted to go for a walk around the Vatican and perhaps into Rome. He went for a walk? On his own? Father Albino always goes for a walk after his siesta in the afternoon. Oh, this is impossible. We need to find the Holy Father immediately. The Pope is not supposed to wander about by himself. Rome is a separate country from the Vatican. If he simply walks there without proper notice and an escort, it could cause a diplomatic incident. And the mayor of Rome is a communist. I don't think he was intent on seeing the mayor. <laughs> Your Holiness, uh, where have you been? About? It might not be safe. Oh, what about to harm the Pope? Many people, I'm afraid, Your Holiness. At the very least, you should have the Swiss Guard with you. Ah, oh, yes. Please, would you tell the Commander of the Guards that they are not to kneel when I talk to them? You spoke? To the guards? I wanted to know what they thought of the Vatican. Can you find us some coffee, please, sister? Yes, Father. Your Holiness, we came to discuss the details of your coronation. I have been thinking about that, too. The coronation ceremony needs to be rewritten. It does not change for hundreds of years. There will be no crowning. Impossible! The Pope is always crowned. I am a priest, not a king. There will be no crown. And... I will walk to St. Peter's. If the Pope is always carried by eight men in a throne on a platform. I will not be carried on the backs of men. Let me help you, sister. I can manage, thank you, Monsignor McGee. I've tasted it, Father. It's terrible. Shall I send it back? No, 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 thank you, sister. We will make do. <clears throat> sister Vincenza should really refer to you as Your Holiness or Holy Father. Oh, well, sister Vincenza has very fixed views. I would not change them for the world. Oh, Holy Father... You should use the royal we when you speak. I am a priest. I will speak as a priest. <clears throat> Your Holiness, have you met Monsignor McGee? No, I don't think I have. He was one of Pope Paul's secretaries. He is familiar with the procedures and protocols of the Vatican. And how Pope Paul handled things. I will need all the help I can get. Will your old room be all right? Of course, Your Holiness. Oh, good. Thank you. Oh, and would you please show Father Lorenzi your office? Of course. And thank you, sister. Thank you, Father. Coffee? Yes, Your Holiness. Not for me, Your Holiness. Now, what else would you like to discuss, Cardinal Vio? There is a request for an audience. <clears throat> the United States Congressional Committee on Population has requested a meeting with Your Holiness. When would they like to meet? <laughs> that is the problem. If you meet, it will send the wrong message to Catholics around the world. Mm -hmm. The committee supports artificial birth control. There are Catholics in almost every country of the world. This year, the world population reached 4.4 billion. Over the next year, 73 million children will be born, most of them in the third world. Every hour, 1,000 children under the age of five die of malnutrition. Yes, I will meet with the committee. Is Your Holiness suggesting that Pope Paul's encyclical on birth control is wrong? Pope Paul did not invoke the doctrine of papal infallibility when he signed the encyclical. The issue needs further study. The issue was studied. And the report of 90% of the Commission favoured permitting some form of artificial birth control. Pope Paul was talked into rejecting the Commission's report. I am not bound by his decision. I want a report on every third world country that has Catholics, and I want it before I meet with the Congressional Committee. But it will take months. I intend to meet with the Committee as soon as possible. There are 3,000 employees in the Courier. Use whoever you need. Holy Father. Ah, oh, Cardinal Benelli, thank you for coming. Am I interrupting? No. We can discuss the coronation later, Your Holiness. I'm certain Your Holiness will think differently after we talk. This was your doing. Oh, it was God's will. Why did you do it? Uh, I'm sorry. I, I couldn't think of anyone else. Not even yourself? Especially not myself. Is it so terrible to be Pope? Yes. And the coffee is terrible, too. Would you like a cup? Uh, no, thank you. 
Your Holiness, it is time to get ready for your first general audience. Oh. Uh, w would you like to come with me? Of course. It, it's just a simple talk. But at least people will understand what the Pope has to say. Certainly I am too small for great things, but I can repeat the truth and the call of the Gospel, as I did when I was a priest in my little church at home. He went out and spoke to his people. He talked to children, to the old, to the infirm. He spoke to them of charity, of justice, of love. With simple stories, much as a fisherman did once, so very long ago. I know. I heard him. It was as if a thousand years of dust and ceremonies had vanished overnight. And the people, oh, the people loved him for it. And the more they loved him, the more those nearest to him in power began to fear him. And as I watched, I began to wonder what had happened in that conclave. I began to feel a sense of purpose. It reaffirmed your belief in God. I began to believe in man. One week later, the coronation ceremony took place, except it was no longer a coronation. The three-crowned tiara was gone. In its place, he wore a simple cloth mitre, the symbol of pastoral authority. For a thousand years, the Pope had been carried on a throne to the sound of trumpets. <laughs> the throne was gone. The trumpets were silent. Instead, he came on foot through his people and walked alone into St. Peter's. And I thought the church would never be, or could never be, the same. The Vatican Press has changed my speech again. Look, look at this. We this, we that. I never use we. This isn't my speech. This is just official statements drafted by the courier and sent to all the newspapers. Oh, they even have me celebrating the 10th anniversary of Paul's encyclical against birth control. I told Vio and Felici that this sort of thing has to stop. Sometimes they can be a little hard of hearing. Well, one day very soon they will hear me. Uh, Bishop Marcinkus is waiting to see you, Your hmm? Holiness. Marcinkus? Uh, send him in. Yes, Your Holiness. Do you have Vio's report on the bank? No. Oh, well, well, the report is important, but more important is the man. Your Holiness, thank you for seeing me. How is Florence, Cardinal Benelli? <laughs> Beautiful. But it's always a pleasure to visit Rome. I'm sure your diocese misses you. Would you like some coffee? Uh, no, thank you. I understand you are from Cicero, Illinois. Yes. And that, that's near Chicago? Yes. How long have you been in Rome? Almost 20 years. Oh, you must miss Chicago. Do you still have family there? A few relatives. I try to visit them whenever I can. It is unfortunate that the church has kept you away from home for so long. It is in the service of God. Hmm. What do you do at the bank? I set policy. What is the policy? The policy is to make money. Oh, is that why you sold the Catholic Bank of Venice for less than it was worth? We... The church received other favors in exchange. If you simply invest with a bank... Banco Ambrosiano? For instance, Ambrosiano. If you simply invest, you receive one interest rate, a low interest rate. But if you know people at the bank, they will tell you if they have a particular project. And if you earmark your money for the project, they will give you a higher rate. But, but what about the nature of the project? I don't ask. Don't you think the church should be concerned about the nature of its investments? Roberto Calvi is one of Italy's cleverest businessmen. Pope Paul trusted him completely. <laughs> and Sindona, who's now in prison, Pope Paul trusted him too. Pope Paul made a mistake with Sindona. Huh. It happens. Oh, I am all too aware of the fallibility of popes. Only in financial matters, Your Holiness. Well, perhaps you can tell His Holiness about your investments with Calvi. They are very complex. I wonder if it is wise to make such investments. Foreign banks do it all the time. The church is not a bank. It is supported by the bank, and the bank's function is to make money. Now, this is the house of God. 
not the house of Rothschild. You can't run the church on Hail Marys, Your Holiness. I can try. It has been a pleasure meeting you, Bishop. Your comments should help me understand the audit. The audit? Uh, His Holiness has asked Cardinal Vio to conduct an audit of the bank. An audit? Thank you again, Bishop. Uh, Hopefully we will be able to get you home very soon. It has been a pleasure. Your Holiness. (laughs) Have you come to a decision? Well, first, Vio's report. But... You have my report. Marcinkus might think you lack a little objectivity. You talk of change, but so far all that has changed are ceremonies and symbols. I will change more than ceremonies. And Vio and Felici? They will come round. As long as they're here, nothing will change. Are you so certain? These men are priests. They are men of God. Once they were priests. Then I will remind them. They are my responsibility, too, just like the poor and the weak. They won't listen. Then I will pray for them. (laughs) You know, Marcinkus was right. You can't run the church with Hail Marys. Are you sure? (sighs) Then you don't need me. I need you. I can't compete with the Holy Spirit. And I can't help you if you wish to save Vio and Felici's souls. Remove them. No. Then I'm going back to Florence. Perhaps that's best. No one should have to stay in Rome too long. I wish I had your faith. All men have doubts at times, even popes. I have more than doubts. This chain and cross was Pope Paul's. He gave it to me when he made me a cardinal. It had belonged to Pope John. I sold it when I was in Venice to raise money for charity when we lost the Catholic bank. My people bought it back and gave it to me. I want you to have it. No, I... Keep it. Faith isn't regained through a cross. It is through others' belief. Think of the men who have worn it. But Felici, Vio, they will all stop you. Only if God lets them. Perhaps it was the Holy Spirit at work in that conclave, and not Cardinal Benelli. When you made me Pope, Hmm. did you expect me to appoint you Secretary of State? I... (laughs) I expected you to do... What you thought best for the church. Do you forgive me? Go in peace, Cardinal Benelli. God forgives you. You walked away from power. Oh, he would have made me Secretary of State if I had asked. I was too proud to ask. Not many cardinals could have walked away from becoming Secretary of State. Oh, in the end, I knew he would have to come to me. <laughs> oh, I loved him. But I wanted him to have to ask. And so I left him alone, surrounded by enemies. It is time for me to visit Rome. I want to see every section on foot. Impossible. That word again. Thousands of people would flock to see you. The city would come to a halt. Uh, Well, Rome has hospitals. Of course. It is the duty of a pastor to visit the sick, and as Bishop of Rome, to visit my churches. Cardinal Vio, you will organize visits to every hospital, every church, every orphanage. And do not tell me it is impossible. And another thing. The article in the Vatican Press about birth control. An excellent article. But people who read it will assume that the opinions in it are mine. The opinions in the article are consistent with the position of the church. They are not consistent with my position, and you know it! Before Paul's encyclical, I submitted a report recommending that some form of artificial birth control be permitted in marriage. Last week, the Vatican Press denied my report ever existed. We have located every copy. They are now locked in the Vatican archives. That denial was a lie. It is the function of the courier to protect a pope from possible mistakes that he made earlier in his life. I will decide if there were mistakes, not the courier. No pope can function without the assistance of the courier. Oh, it would appear 
that no pope can function with its assistance. It is the function of the pope to set policy and to govern, not the courier and not the Vatican press. The press was merely following the policy set out by Pope Paul. Cardinal Felici, last week you told me that the courier wanted me to restrain what it called my natural exuberance. It was merely a suggestion, Your Holiness. I want you to return the compliment on my behalf. Tell that little newspaper to restrain its views. Editors are not indispensable. I will bury him in enough paper and reports to keep him busy 24 hours a day. He won't have time to do anything else. Oh, he'll find the time. He will destroy everything Pope Paul did. He will destroy the church. We made him Pope. Benelli made him Pope. As long as he is Pope, we have to obey. Popes are like editors. Neither is indispensable. Holy Father, it's very late. You have to get some sleep. Yes, I will soon. And there's so many reports to digest. Monsignor McGee says nothing was decided during Pope Paul's final year. You can't solve a year's problems in just a few days. Uh, some things just can't wait any longer. I have to try. McGee says Vio always gave Pope Paul summaries to read, not these full reports. Summaries? McGee should know. Yes, he should. Good night, Diego. Holy Father. Vio gave him summaries? Oh, mustn't forget my little pill. Now, must bring it. There. Cardinal Bonelli, please. Yes, I know it's late. Yeah, yes, I know. Just tell him it's the Pope. He called me in Florence. His voice was quiet, calm. I could feel his resolve. What did he say? That the truth is as hard to find in the Vatican as a good cup of coffee. <laughs> he asked me to come back to Rome, to come back as Secretary of State. Oh, he was going to remove them all. Vio, Marcinkus, Baggio. He said it was time to send people home. That was his right? Oh, but these were not ordinary priests. They were used to power. He was the Pope. They had to obey. As long as he lived, they had to obey. I warned him. I asked him to wait. To wait for me. <laughs> Are you all right? I, yes. You need to go to hospital. Do you fear death? No. I do. And the closer it comes, the more I'm afraid. Because you have lost God? No. Because I might find him. How are your feet this morning? Well, all the better for this soaking. Oh, oh, that's better. <laughs> Did you remember to take your pill? Yes, sister, I took my pill. The doctor says it'll give you more energy. It'll not make these papers disappear any faster. I see you ate all your sweets last night. Yes, sister. Too many aren't good for you. I know, sister. Mm. Cardinal Baggio is here for his meeting, Your Holiness. Oh, uh, right, right, just a minute and then send him in. Please, would you let me know when Cardinal Vio is here? I, and can you take this bowl and towel with you, Diego? Yes, Your Holiness. Uh, now, where are my sandals? Ah. Perhaps a few more sweets for tonight? Oh, yes, thank you, sister. Your Holiness. Oh, good morning, Cardinal Baggio. Thank you for coming. Overseeing all of our bishops throughout the world must keep you very busy. It does, Holy Father. It's strange how few people appreciate that. How long have you been prefect of the Second Congregation? Seven years. And at the Vatican? Most of my career in the church, almost 30 years. That is a long time to be away from parish work. I still say Mass every day, privately. No, that isn't the same. <laughs> Tell me about next month's South American conference. Oh, I've been planning it for over two years. It's going to be the first of this size in Latin America in decades. I understand Cardinal Lorscheider is working on the conference with you. Yes. 
Cardinal Lorscheider and I have talked a great deal about the widespread poverty, the oppressive governments. Mm. He is strongly of the view that something has to be done to help these people. The church has no place in politics. I will condemn any government that seeks to exploit its people. If you speak out, you will destroy the church in Latin America. The governments will turn on us. If the Pope does not speak out, who will? You realise that the Diocese of Venice is vacant? Yes. The people of Venice are very dear to me. They need a cardinal to nourish and care for them. I want you to be that cardinal. Me? Yes. But there is so much I still have to do in Rome. My work, the bishops throughout the world. I want you to take care of Venice. You can't mean it. I do. Thank you, but I must decline. Cardinal Baggio, the matter is not open for debate. I am not leaving Rome. And your oath of obedience? I am a cardinal, a prince of the church. I am the Pope. Your Holiness has much to learn. I am not asking you to go to Venice. It is an order. Not for me. You would defy the Pope? It takes more than new robes to make a Pope. It takes more than patting children on the head and telling them funny stories. Thirty days ago, you were a nobody in a backwater diocese preaching to empty churches. And now you think you can rule the Roman Catholic Church? I am staying in Rome. Maybe I am not much of a pope, but you are going to Venice. I'd sooner go to hell. I believe that can be arranged. <sighs> Why would any priest want to be pope? Your Holiness, Cardinal Vio is here. Send Cardinal Vio in. Yes, Holy Father. Cardinal Baggio looked upset. Thank you for waiting. Tell me, is it usual for a cardinal to refuse to obey the Pope? I don't understand. I just told Cardinal Baggio that I wanted him to replace me in Venice. He said no. He said no? Yes. <laughs> you agreed to reconsider? I want you to arrange for his transfer. If Your Holiness insists. I do. Now, I've read your report on the Vatican Bank. I've also read Cardinal Benelli's report. Benelli submitted a report? I have decided to remove Bishop Masinkas. When? Tomorrow. Do you have another job for him in the Vatican? No, he is to be transferred to Chicago. As your holiness wishes. How long have you been Secretary of State? Ten years. It is a demanding job. I've done my best. I know. You have earned the right to rest. Does your holiness want me to retire? Yes. Who is to replace me as Secretary of State? Cardinal Benelli. You are the Pope. What do you think? Your way is not Pope Paul's way. I am not Pope Paul. I fear for the Church. Why? Because you are wrong. How am I wrong? Everything about you is wrong. I am what I am. Yes. Are you looking for something, Father McGee? Uh, Your Holiness. Yes, the book on the history of the papacy. Ah, that's over here. Mm. You would have thought God would have been kinder to those he chose. Yeah. How did Pope Paul feel as he neared the end of his reign? That he had failed God. I can understand that. Can I get you anything? A machine to do paperwork? No. Good night. Good night, Holy Father. One of these. <clears throat> Bedtime reading, I think. Vio called me the next morning. His voice was flat, without emotion. He read me the statement he was giving to Vatican Radio. At 5.30 in the morning of September the 29th, 1978, Monsignor McGee found the Pope dead in his bed. He was sitting up with the light on, reading the imitation of the life of Christ. Death was due to a heart attack. He died on the 33rd day of his reign.
He was the first pope in a century to die alone. It was an act of God. Oh. You didn't kill him. You committed no sin. Isn't pride a sin? Isn't anger a sin? Isn't desire for vengeance a sin? Isn't loss of faith a sin? I made him pope. And I abandoned him. It was the will of God. Oh, was it? Was it so? It's late. I have to leave. Not until the end. He is dead. That is the end. When has the church ever believed death is the end? And so I went to Rome. Not as I had expected as Secretary of State, but I went. I went to see Luciani. When I arrived at his study, Sister Vincenza was there. Luciani's body was still in his bedroom. The church had lost its soul. May I go in to see him? Of course, sister. He looked so peaceful when I found him. You found him? He, he was sitting up in bed. His glasses were still on. His head was slightly to one side. His papers were in his lap. His papers? Lists of names. He told me he was sending people home. But Bio said he was reading The Imitation of the Life of Christ. Uh, no, he had his papers. Where are his things? There's nothing here. Cardinal Vio had everything taken away. What? Everything except his books. And was he reading this? About the lives of the popes? Before he went to bed? Oh, no. That was Monsignor McGee. I wonder why. I asked Monsignor McGee last night. He said he wanted to know if Father Albino's reign was still the shortest of any pope. What, last night? Not this morning? Last night. Sister, did the pope complain about any physical problem yesterday? Chest pains or shortness of breath? No. My dear Luciani, you were wrong about the Holy Spirit. And I was wrong about man. Pray for us both, sister. And pray for the church. It is now our responsibility to schedule the funeral and prepare for the conclave. We must... What about the rumours? What the rumours? That his body was not discovered at 5.30 by McGee, but at 4.30 by a nun. And that he died reading mm -hmm. secret papers. Responsible newspapers are carrying the story. These are lies by people trying to discredit the Vatican. Probably the communists. Oh, is Sister Vincenza a communist? Sister Vincenza is in Venice. Yes. I spoke to her before you sent her away. She discovered the Pope's body a little after 4.30. He was holding papers he'd been working on all afternoon. Impossible. View, what is going on? Well, how could I say a nun discovered the Pope's body? So you lied to the prince? Yes, Cardinal Ottoviani, I lied. Uh, and the story about what he was reading, was that a lie? Mm. Yes. How could you do this? If we tell the truth now, it will only be worse. You can't hide the truth. Why not? I won't hide the truth. The newspapers are already saying that he might have been murdered. <laughs> You are a fool, view. We need an autopsy. The body has been embalmed. I sent the embalmers away. I sent them back. The what? body was embalmed last night. Last night? There will not be an autopsy. Why not? There is no precedent. Cardinal Felici, you are the expert? I don't know. If we've lied about the time, about the papers, people will think we've also lied about the cause of death. There will always be rumours. Rumours about murder. We need to set a date for his funeral. What happened to his things? His personal effects? His papers. I had them removed. His watch glasses, pictures, that sort of thing were sent to his family. And his papers? They were confidential. They were destroyed. Why? I am Secretary of State. It was my decision. And what about his pills? Pills? His pills! The coffee he drank that night, the tray of sweets he kept on his desk. I gave instructions to remove everything. But they were thrown out? Yes. Uh, then we will do an autopsy. An autopsy is Ugly. So is the possibility of murder. I agree with Benelli. Yeah, that the Pope was murdered. That we should have an autopsy to prove he wasn't. What we need is an informal investigation to see if there is any need for an autopsy, a very quiet affair. Let us carve the poor bastard up, prove he wasn't murdered, and be done with it. Well, I don't As know. head of the Supreme Court, I will conduct the investigation. No, Felici. As senior cardinal, I will head the investigation. 
I will assist. And so will I. We will need Father Lorenzi. I sent him north. I didn't think... We will need to speak to him and to Monsignor McGee. McGee has left Rome and hasn't been seen since. Find him! Uh, Dr. Buzzanetti, you are the director of the Vatican Health Service. That is correct, Your Eminence. We would just like to ask you a few questions. About the morning you examine the body. Everything that is said here is completely confidential, even the fact that we've had this meeting. I understand. You determine the cause of death. An acute myocardial infarction. That is heart failure, Your Eminence. And you estimated his death occurred at approximately 11 p.m. Probably while His Holiness was still awake. Why do you say that? The state of rigor mortis of the body. Also, his glasses were still on, and the light by his bed. I see. Was there any evidence of some other cause of death? Such as? Anything unusual? No. Did you see any evidence that the Pope had been murdered? Of course not. No, of course not. Thank you very much, Doctor. Before determining that the Pope died of a heart attack, how often had you examined him? His physician was Dr. de Ross in Venice. I had never examined his holiness before. Never? Not until he died. Or have you ever spoken to Dr. de Ross? Last week. He told me the Pope was in excellent health. To be dead. Before his death, he was in excellent health. Did you speak to Dr. de Ross after he died? No. Well, did you ask anyone if he had any symptoms? The chest pains or shortness of breath? No. Um, I assume that if someone noticed anything, they would have told me. So no one told you about any symptoms? That is correct. I have spoken to a number of heart specialists. They tell me that when people die of a heart attack, they're not found sitting up in bed with their glasses on. There's usually a tightness in the chest, often accompanied by severe pain along the left side. Now, the Pope would have reacted to the pain. He would have made some effort to get help or to stay alive. Perhaps. There were alarm buttons on either side of his bed. Would a heart attack have prevented him from pushing one of those buttons? Not usually. No, but if somehow it did, wouldn't there still be some evidence of an attempt to reach them? Did you see any evidence of such an effort? No. So how can you say the Pope died of a heart attack? I... <laughs> he was the Pope. It must have been a heart attack. <sighs> did you look for any evidence of poison? No. Who would want to murder the Pope? No one. <laughs> now, are you finished, Cardinal Benelli? Yes. Thank you, Dr. Buzzanetti. Uh, you are excused. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, well, God help us if we're ever sick. <laughs> Where do we get him, Felici? He is really very competent. He helped treat Pope Paul for years. It's a wonder he lived so long. Who's next? Father Lorenzi. Ah. And has Vio found Monsignor McGee? Yes, he has. We met with Lorenzi. He was nervous. Well, very nervous. He kept insisting he had nothing to hide. Had he? Well, when Buzzanetti examined the Pope's body, Lorenzi never mentioned any symptoms. Now there was a pain. What pain? He said Luciani complained of a severe pain at 7.45 that evening. Why didn't he tell Buzzanetti? Well, he said he didn't connect the pain with Luciani's death. How could he fail to connect the two? And why didn't he call a doctor? Monsignor McGee, I'm glad that you were able to interrupt your travels and visitors. I came as soon as I learned you were looking for me. I would like to know what happened the day the Pope died. When the body was discovered? No, the day before. The day he died. Were you there all day? I'd been there the entire 32 days. I hadn't left the papal apartments once. So you were there all day? The day he died? I... I went out at 2.30 and was back by 4.30, but that was the first and only time. What was the Pope's schedule that morning? He had appointments with Cardinal Baggio and Cardinal Vio. Do you know what they discussed? No. After that? The Pope worked on papers from the Secretary of State until lunch. What did he do after lunch? He took a short nap and went for a walk. In the Vatican Gardens? Uh, no, Cardinal Vio didn't approve. He would usually go to the roof of the papal apartments and walk there. Alone? Always. And the day he died? It was cold that day, and there was a strong wind, so he walked in the salon next to the secretary's room. Like a prisoner in his own apartments. 
Then Cardinal Vio called. He wanted to see the Pope again that evening. I interrupted His Holiness. He seemed uh, upset, but he agreed. A little while later, I heard a, a harsh coughing sound. He told me he had a pain and asked for Sister Vincenza. I found her and returned to the salon. Uh, eventually, the pain went away. Where was this pain? I, I don't know. Where was Father Lorenzi? Oh, he was out. He didn't come back until uh, much later, uh, about seven o'clock. Are you certain? Absolutely. His holiness suffered another pain at about 7.45. The only time he complained was at 5.30 in the afternoon. And Father Lorenzi wasn't there? That is what I said. But Father Lorenzi says he was there from 3.30 on, and that the only time the Pope felt a pain was at 7.45 in the evening. He is mistaken. But Lorenzi was there at 7.45. Yes. Did you call a doctor? No, His Holiness told me not to. Uh, did you call Cardinal Vio and tell him what happened? No. He was coming anyway. When the Pope was in pain and his life possibly at risk, you called no one. When did Vio arrive? At 6.30, Cardinal Felici. Uh, he met with the Holy Father until uh, about 20 to 8. After the meeting, Cardinal Vio left and the Holy Father joined us for dinner. Oh, did the Holy Father complain about another pain when he came out of the meeting with Vio? No. Did you hear any of his conversation with Cardinal Vio? No. Did anyone else join you for dinner? Cardinal Felici and Cardinal Baggio. What did you discuss? Generalities, nothing specific. After dinner, their eminences left, and so did Father Lorenzi. So you were alone with the Pope? <laughs> yes. The Holy Father and I went into his study. He picked up some papers and went to bed. Oh. Sister Vincenza says that you read a book on the papacy that night. Uh, yes. She says you decided to see if his reign was the shortest of any Popes. <laughs> There, there, there were a few shorter, but... In that night? The night he died? The night before his body was discovered? Why did you leave Rome, Monsignor McGee? The morning after the Pope died, I passed one of his valets in the street. He pointed at me and said, There goes the murderer. I, I, I didn't know what to do. Colonel Vio was too busy to see me, so I went to see Bishop Marcinkus. Marcinkus? I knew he would help me. I told him that I'd been accused of killing the Pope and needed to get away. He arranged for a ticket in 20 minutes and I left immediately. When the Pope's body was discovered, did you tell Dr. Buzzanetti that the Pope had been in pain the day before? No. Uh -huh. You are excused. Thank you. One of them is lying. Or mistaken. Either Lorenzi was there when the pain happened, or he wasn't. The pain was either at 5.30 or at 7.45. This was the day the Pope died. How can you confuse things like that? One of them has to be lying. Or both. Uh, well, we'll break the lunch. <clears throat> Who's next? Cardinal Vio. When will you finish? I don't know. The funeral and the conclave can't be put off. It may be necessary. And what will we tell the world? <laughs> the truth. Then let us pray that you finish today. We need to prepare for the conclave. We need to decide who we want as the next pope. But first, we need to bury the old one. I once asked you if you would consider a higher office. I am asking again. We want you to be the next pope. Cardinal Sunenzi is right. The Africans, the South Americans, and most of the Europeans, they all want you. I... We'll consider it. I will go and tell them. And Luciani isn't even buried. He's with God. We are not so fortunate. You, like him, have so much faith. Sometimes. Oh, sometimes. I have doubts. So do most men. But most men are not thinking of becoming Pope. We had Luciani. Perhaps now we need a Pope who knows what it is to rope his way to God. Oh, what if I don't find him, Leo? You found Luciani. And left him to die. Perhaps he was too perfect for this world. For anyone but me. There is no one else. There are other cardinals. Who? Baggio, Vio, Felici. If you do not agree, one of them will be the next Pope. <laughs> Absolute power. My hand rather than theirs. 
I spoke to Luciani the day he died. He told me about his meeting with Baggio. He also told me about his meeting with Vio and his decision on Marcingus. What happened? He was sending them home. Uh, now we need a new pope. <sighs> Not until we establish the truth. Thank you for coming, Cardinal Vio. I know how busy you are. The funeral arrangements and the conclave. Of course. Uh, Benelli has a few questions to ask you. Try to be brief. Oh. We are here to discuss the death of a pope. All men die, even popes. Now, it is one thing to die. It is another thing to be killed. Oh, no one killed the pope. Oh. Tell me about Pope Paul. What? What did you think of him? Paul was a great pope. Trained in the discipline of the courier. He was learned, a scholar, an intellectual, a man who cared deeply for the church and who thought carefully before coming to decisions. And what was his greatest achievement? His encyclical on birth control. Oh. And what do you want in the next pope? A greater pole. A man to carry his work forward, a man of authority and discipline. And compassion? <laughs> compassion is for priests, not for popes. And not for secretaries of state. As secretary, my function is to run the church. Yet you let Luciani change the investiture ceremony. It was a ceremony a thousand years old. He changed it on a whim. As if he were just the organisation of a garden party. And you let him. He was the Pope. And as long as he was the Pope, you had to obey. Yes. Tell us about John Paul's feelings towards Paul's encyclical on birth control. We would have convinced him. Of what? That Pope Paul was right. Now, how could you, if you were no longer here? What do you mean? You were leaving Rome. I had no intention of leaving Rome. On September the 28th, the day the Pope died, he told you that he was removing you as Secretary of State. How dare you say that? I don't dare say it. Cardinal Sunans does. Sunans? Yes. He spoke to His Holiness immediately after his meeting with Cardinal Vio. And who was to replace Vio? I was. What? Do you deny it? I don't deny it. And later that evening you returned. You came to see the Pope one final time. <laughs> so the Pope frequently... Well, you had just been removed. You returned to try to get the Pope to change his mind. He was going to destroy everything that Pope Paul accomplished. You, you failed. He wouldn't listen. And the papers were already drawn up, the papers removing you and the others. He had papers. And that night he took them to bed with him. He was going to remove the best people in the courier. Well, he was the Pope. You had to obey. I did not have to obey. As long as he lived, you had to obey. What happened that evening of September the 28th? Was it the coffee? Was it the sweets he loved? Or was it his bottle of pills? There was no evidence he was you, poisoned. You destroyed the evidence! No pope is more important than the church. The courier has defeated greater popes than John Paul. And how would you have stopped him? <laughs> I buried him in paper. But he made decisions. <laughs> and we told him no. Again and again you told him no. Yes. And day by day the piles of paper grew higher. Yes. For a year nothing had been decided. Now in one month you poured on his shoulders every problem you could find. He was pope. He had to make decisions. And when he made them you told him no. He was wrong! <laughs> I am Secretary of State. It is my right to tell the Pope he is wrong. It is the Pope's right to make the final decision. <laughs> error has no right. Oh, you saying the Pope was in error? Every word. Every action. Well, who are you to judge the Pope? He wasn't the Pope. He was a country priest that you pushed into the papacy. He was your Pope, not ours. And this country priest had ideas of his own. Ideas he was willing to fight for. He would have destroyed the church. Who made you the final arbiter? The courier is the church. He would have changed the courier. I would have stopped him. He removed you. There was only one way you could stop him. I did not murder the Pope. You drove him. You couldn't change him, so you drove him day and night. Yes, I drove him. I drove him day and night. He was in error. He was wrong. He was the error. He would have destroyed the church. Yes. He had to die. Yes. He had to die for the church. Yes. I drove him. I worked him. I drove him until his body. Until he died. Yes, God help me. I killed the Pope. We all killed him. Cardinal Leo, you are excused. Yes. Yes. So that's that. God help him. Who? Cardinal Leo, 
I think we are at an end. No. There is another witness. Who? Cardinal Felici here. This investigation is concluded. It will conclude when I am done. The press will announce to the world that the church has put off the Pope's funeral and the election of his successor to investigate whether the last Pope was murdered by his cardinals and bishops. Are you mad? Perhaps you might give me a few minutes with Cardinal Benelli. Very well. Ah. It is over. Not yet. John Paul died. It was God's will. Maybe God made him Pope. But men killed him. No one murdered the Pope. The autopsy will determine that. There will be no autopsy. Tomorrow the Pope is scheduled to be buried, and tomorrow he will be buried. I wonder what kind of God you pray to. I wonder if you have a God. <laughs> Theo didn't murder the Pope. He isn't hard enough. But others are. You would have killed Christ to save your church. The death of Christ is not at issue. The death of his Pope is. Which is more important? Justice for one dead man or the life of Christ's church? Let us assume you are right. Let us assume someone murdered the Pope. It might have been someone outside of the church, but let us assume it was someone in the church. Balance the harm your investigation will cause the church against the benefit of punishing one man or even a group of men. In the end, God will be their judge. What God chooses to do is his business. Luciani's death is mine. You will establish nothing without an autopsy, and for that you need a precedent. There is precedent. Pius VIII. Yes, you can force an autopsy and the investigation. But what you really want is Vio Marcinkus, myself and others, out of Rome. You will not accomplish that with an autopsy. The only way is if you become the next pope. Then I will become pope. The man who puts off the conclave and forces the church to announce an investigation to the world will never become pope. So, it isn't about my love for Luciani. It isn't about religion or the church. It isn't about God. It is about power. Luciani was a saint. Churches are not run by saints. They are run by men who understand power. In five days, we are going into conclave to elect the next pope. End the investigation now, and you could be that pope. You could have the power to remake the church. Have you come to a decision, Benelli? The investigation has concluded. At the moment that mattered most, I chose wrong. And with my choice, somewhere there was a sigh. What could have been would never be. That was my final sin. You chose to be Pope. That isn't a sin. <laughs> I chose power. Religion is power. The power to direct men's lives, the power to govern their souls. I thought so once, but not now. Then what is it? I think it is about man's relationship with God. On October the 4th, John Paul was buried, as scheduled. In death, the smile was finally gone. It was a cold, grey day. It rained on and off. Still, hundreds of thousands came to say goodbye. Five days later, the cardinals of the Roman Catholic Church once more gathered together. <laughs> once more, they went into conclave to elect the next successor to Peter the next Pope. And I, Cardinal Benelli, a man without faith, had decided to become that Pope. Your Eminence, mm. dear Cardinal Schurdens, Gontin, forgive me. The conclave is deadlocked between yourself and Felici. I know. Something needs to be done. But what, what about the nine votes for Wojtyla? Cardinal Ratzinger is keeping the Germans and Austrians behind him. I can't <sighs> move them. And Felice is still holding the Conservatives together. We need only five votes. You can't get them. What do you suggest, Cardinal Lorscheider? We need to find a compromise. Hmm? I met with Felice this morning. He proposed Wojtyla. A Polish pope? The thought must make Vio's teeth grind. He has no connection with the Korea. Then why would Felici suggest him? I don't know why, but we can't elect a pope without some of Felici's or Votiva's votes. Tell me about Votiva. You know him. Not well. Nor do I. 
But I do know that he has stood up against the communists in Poland. What about implementing the decisions of the Second Vatican Council? To open the church up to new ideas? and to have closer communication with other religions. He says he is committed to the Second Vatican Council. But you spoke to him? Yes. And you believe him? Hmm. Who knows what will happen to a man when he puts on the fisherman's ring? I knew with Luciani. There is very little choice. Felici controls 30 votes and nine are firmly committed to Votiva. We need five of those votes. You will not accept Felici, he will not accept you. That leaves Votiva. In the last conclave, we left with the feeling that we had been inspired by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Holy Spirit has been notably absent in this conclave. God has to work through the men he has available. But you are asking me to walk away from the papacy. It is your decision. Oh. I will do whatever you want. Is there no other way? No. <sighs> now I understand how you faced down all those governments in South America. Oh, that was easy. I knew they were all wrong. Wojtyla will become the next pope. Your eminence. This isn't the papal ring. It is to me. We can still win. Only five votes. It would have cost the church too much to get them. You would have made a great pope. I don't think I was meant to wear white. Do you accept your election as Supreme Pontiff? I accept. By what name do you wish to be called? John Paul II. Why wouldn't you see me after you were elected? I knew that you would make me reopen the investigation into Luciani's death. Why did you keep them all in Rome? Felici, Vio, my sinkers. Vio died six months later. Why did you swear McGee to silence? To protect the church. And what about my sinkers? Last June, his friend Calvi was found hanging from a bridge in London with a brick in each pocket. His bank, Ambrosiano, collapsed. $1.2 billion disappeared through shell companies whose stock was held in the name of Bishop Marcinkus. Marcinkus made an honest mistake. The church will pay what it should. Pope John and the Second Vatican Council opened the windows of the church to the world. For four years, I've watched you close them, one by one. I have told the world that for the church, morality is not a matter of convenience. Oh, and Luciani's death, was that a matter of convenience? I will not listen to any more about Luciani. When you look in a mirror, what do you see? Infallibility. I see the man God chose to be Pope. You lack faith. Oh. Faith is the will to believe in something greater than yourself. I can help you find that will. Forget your written confession. I will help you find God. Faith can't simply be given. Not even by a pope. For four years I've lived here. But all the while I've known I have failed. I failed the church. I failed myself. I failed Luciani. Forget Luciani. I can't. I watched him during his 33 days as Pope. And after he died, I sat in the conclave, five votes away from the papacy. And when I spoke to Lord Scheider and decided to walk away, it was as if I... I brushed the hand of God. You cannot build the church on edicts and lies. What would you build it on? Oh, compassion and truth. We live in a world that takes advantage of compassion and twists the truth. What have you demanded of the world? That it live in accordance with Christ's word. And how can you demand less of the church? You don't know that Luciani was murdered. In one way or the other, men defied him and then killed him, and you have done nothing about I it. I will hear no more about Luciani. You will hear what I tell you. I am the Pope. I made you Pope. 
I have committed sins, sins of pride and the desire for power. What have you committed by averting your eyes? The church is more than the Vatican. It is greater than the men who run her. It is greater than any pope. And there are things that I must do as pope to protect the church. But I am also a man. Will you grant me absolution? Do you acknowledge before God that you are sorry for your sins and do you promise to sin no more? No. What I have done, I have done for my church. Then I cannot grant you absolution. I will publish my confession. Every enemy will use it against us. I will prove to the church that it is great enough to be wrong. I order you not to publish it. I'm dying. Only God can order me now. I am willing to risk the loss of my immortal soul for the church. What are you willing to risk? That is between me and God. Then I will leave you to God. And may God have mercy upon your soul. As if I brushed the hand of God. <laughs> it isn't about Luciani. It isn't about the church. It is about faith. <laughs> God, into your hands I deliver my spirit, to your grace and wisdom I leave your church. October the 26th, 1982, Cardinal Giovanni Benelli died. The hospital announced that his death was the result of a heart infarction. Due to complications arising from his refusal to go to the hospital on a timely basis for treatment, the Vatican issued an immediate denial. On June the 30th, 1984, the Vatican paid $250 million to settle claims brought against it arising out of the collapse of Banco Ambrosiano. The Italian government issued an arrest warrant for Bishop Marcinkus. The arrest never took place as he remained for years in the sanctuary of the Vatican. Bishop Marcinkus was promoted to Archbishop and kept on as the head of the Vatican Bank. In The Last Confession by Roger Crane, Benelli was David Suchet. The confessor, Keith Drinkle, Luciani, Richard O'Callaghan, Vio, Nigel Antony, Marcinkus, Peter Marinka, Pope Paul VI, Bernard Gallagher, Felici, Crawford Logan, Ottaviani, Donald Sinden, Sunans, Andrew Branch, Gontin, Cyril Unri, Lorscheider, Paul Humpelitz, Baggio and Buzzanetti, Robert Pugh, McGee, Roger May, Sister Vincenza, Jean Trend, and Lorenzi, Ben Warwick. The last confession was adapted for radio and produced by Martin Jenkins. The play was directed by David Blount. It was a peer production for BBC Radio 4. <laughs>